in the end, one of the key things uh, became uh, how can we continue with this uh, rational uh, process without creating a building that was uh, rational but perhaps slightly boring or kind of maybe overly kind of intellectual in terms of its uh, entities. So at some point when we had all this, this structure of alternation, this structure of boxes, we uh, then looked at the paradox of Seattle, which is that on the one hand it's a kind of very regular and typical American city with a grid and with skyscrapers and with kind of buildings that are more or less distinguished. But it is that city exists in uh, an extremely beautiful uh, place where nature is very strong and very present. Uh, it's on a kind of fjord, uh, it's on water, sea, uh, it's in itself very hilly. The library was placed on a slope and on beautiful days you also see uh, the silhouette of a, a volcano uh, that has a kind of snow topped uh, almost like uh, Mount Fuji. And so what we then decided is to make all of this architecture by taking each of these boxes and shifting them in such a way that they could capture those features in na nature. So this was kind of addressed to the offices, addressed to the mountain, addressed to the port, addressed to uh, other uh, features or other uh, elements of the natural context. So that it, it became you know, a, a strictly and maybe dry rational uh, document became lyrical by engaging in that way with nature. And I think that is kind of really the moment that we also captured the imagination of the city uh, as a whole and, and where the, 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 the support for the building went you know, beyond anything that we could imagine uh, and where we were really involved you know, as actors in an in incredibly public orchestration uh, of, of an ambitious architectural project. And I've never had a kind of similar experience of, of that feeling carried uh, but at the same time being encouraged to be ambitious and to be uh, soliciting the public at the same time.